Dylan Holloway has entered the chat. What's going on, folks? Welcome to Got Your Back Post Game Edition. Orders with a convincing, rock solid win over the Vegas Golden Knights. 5 1 the final score. We got Struddy. We got Brownie. We got Zuby. We're on YouTube, at least for now. So we're ready to rock and roll with the pod tonight. Coming at you as always from our long shot studio here in Sherwood Park. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in the park. Long shots, a great golf experience, great bar experience. Awesome place to go and watch a game. Do you know where you're watching your playoff games when the Oilers are on the road? Think about long shots, play a little golf, watch some hockey. The show is always brought to you by Sherwood Buick GMC. Just had an amazing month down there because they know how to treat their customers, right? They know how to streamline the process. They're specialists at selling cars, so when you go in there, they take good care of you. I know a lot of the staff, really solid people. Phil, who runs the place, fantastic guy. The place is sharp, looks great. The vehicles are amazing, and they have stock. That's so critical when you go there, right? You want to actually get in something, feel it, smell it. Even have a chance to test drive it. Sherwood Buick GMC can get that done for you. 10 Auto Mall Road, gmcpod.com is the website. And tell them, please tell them that Got Your Back sent you. Rob Brown is in his 1974 Impala, based on the sound of the turn signal. <laughs> and uh, seriously, Brownie, what is with it? It's like, it's like the loud. Jeez. <laughs> oh, man. Know. Listen to that well, thing. When, when you, well, when you get a year older, it seems like you need to heat. Your hearing aids need to work a little bit better. I'm. I'm getting older, Shoggy. I need I need that extra loud blinker so I know when it's on and when I can turn it off. Extra bright one so you can tell when it's when it's blinking. Mission accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> Struds, you're not in your usual. Uh, we don't see the pictures behind you. Where are you at, buds? What you got going yeah. tonight, pal? I'm in, out at a kind of charity event here in BC, so I'm here for a couple nights. And uh, yeah, big lot of hockey games tomorrow. I'll be wheeling and dealing. Someone's going to be getting backdoor tap-ins all day long. What's the event? What do you what do you got going on, man? Uh, it's like a, it's one of the oil men's uh, tournaments. You know they have oh, okay. them, uh, all over northern Alberta and BC. So yeah, I'm, it's Brownie and I did one in Grand Prairie a few uh, years ago. I don't remember much of it. Uh, I was having a good time. So <laughs> tonight I, I, I made the choice. I would not be the same shape as I was when I did with Brownie. That's awesome. Hey, by the way, before we get going on this, uh, I've noticed both of you posting in various spots about your hockey camps. And you guys uh, are both part of very successful, very awesome uh, camps that you put on. And I just wanted to check in. How's it going? Give you guys a little plug. You still have room. How can people get in? Struds, you first, man. I've, you've been all over Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I love the Facebook. Uh, like a lot of things, poking people as well. But uh, I, I do have my D-man. My D-man camp for the spring is in uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. It's it's there's still just a few spots left, but it's U11 and U18 girls and boys, uh, two day camp, and we'll work on you know some of the finer areas of the game. Then I have my own in the summer, and it's all on JasonStradwick.com. So, JasonStradwick, I can answer questions there. Perfect, perfect. Brownie, what do you got going on, buddy? Uh, we have a our spring hockey school is sold out, but we have a summer one in August. It's X L E X C E L hockey camp in St. Albert. It's five days long. We still are taking registrations for that. And then in May, I think it's our ninth annual street hockey tournament in St. Albert. It's called Road Rage. So if you punch in Road Rage Street Hockey, it'll come up. I think last year we had 110 teams. Seven kids per Jeez. team. Wow. We have rinks set up, and there's food food trucks, and it's a full weekend. Uh, and it's the final weekend of May. Road Rage Street Hockey Tournament. That's awesome. Good stuff. Well, wanted to give you guys a chance to plug that stuff because I know they're they're uh, both excellent uh, hockey camps, and uh, yeah, for people that have the time, uh, it'd be a great opportunity for you to go spend some time with the big guys. Uh, okay, gentlemen, we got a hockey game to break down. Let's do it. Courtesy Mr. Dirk, the iconic men's clothing store in Edmonton, founded in 1939. They're just off White Avenue, 102nd Street. 
Mr. Dirk's got everything you need for every aspect of your wardrobe, casual stuff like jeans and pants and shirts and sweaters and shoes. And on the formal side, great selection of brand name suits, sport coats, uh, ties as well. They do customs as well. And you know what? Struds spent a little bit more money on a shirt, right? So the dress shirts, you spend a little more money. This thing from Mr. Dirk, this thing is four years old. I just had it dry cleaned. It's like brand new. If you spend just a little more on the shirts, they last an amazing amount of time. Look how crisp this bad boy is. Look at that neckline. Yeah, no, for sure. Like it, it, it makes your neck look thicker. Like it's filling out that that collar area. Usually it looks like Ichabob Crane in there. So it's my compliments to the chef. It looks fantastic. And that is Mr. Dirk. Visit. MrDirk.com. Okay, uh, without Connor McDavid, the Oilers come out and, boy, they laid down a really rock-solid effort, Struds. I'm just going to lay it out there for you. What did you like best about what you saw from Edmonton tonight? I don't think my review of the game is going to be quite the same as you guys. Uh, okay. And I'm, I'm going to start on the other way. I'm going to say uh, Aiden Hill looked like a guy who hasn't played a consistent amount of hockey this year. And then they were missing Petra Angelo, Mark Stone, and Chandler Stevenson. Three of their probably most, maybe five or six most important players. So I, I it, the outcome was great. The Oilers played well. But the team they played against, guys, I, I'm not, I, 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 I'm not going to overvalue this win. Hmm. <laughs> That's Negative. a good point. Don't start. That's a good point. You'll That's a good days, point. I am. I, yeah. No, Stratus, I agree. That was a, a, a Vegas team that was missing five regulars, five very good players out of their life. So almost a third of their team wasn't playing tonight. And you're right. I, I was shocked that Aiden Hill was playing, and he hasn't played in six weeks. And it looked, and it showed. Okay. Having said all of that, the Oilers cannot control who they play against. And I thought the Oilers came out and played very disciplined hockey. The one thing that Vegas had tonight, they had the Eichel line playing. The Eichel line absolutely dominated the Oilers in the playoffs last year. That is why the Oilers couldn't beat Vegas, because Eichel's line was too good. They limited what Eichel's line did tonight. They were disciplined, didn't take any penalties to give the Golden Knights a power play. So... This, this was not the Golden Knights team that you would, would see in the playoffs, but this was the Edmonton Oilers playing the way they need to play in the playoffs. So i got to give credit to the Oilers top to bottom. They played a very uh, professional and disciplined hockey game, and uh, the, the outcome and the score was indicative, I thought, of the play. Chaos never died, says Strud's is just a turbo contrarian these days you are struts you've you each of the last few wins you've come out with a hard right cross to change the perspective to change the thought process on a win so i mean i will remind you lovingly and respectfully that the oilers tonight were without a guy named connor mcdavid i mean what about the quality of the play that the oilers put forward yep so the when last wednesday they lost to dallas i was the one that was you know, Yeehaw. talking about how great great of an outcome this would be. Uh, Colorado, I was negative because, not negative, but just I was trying to bring people down because Colorado had no energy. Saturday was Calgary, and I, I'm i not really going to go too much into that one. But again, here we are in another, what I think it's Wednesday today. And, you know, Vegas is losing, missing some key pieces. There's no doubt that there's no one in the league, I think, that is more irreplaceable than 97. I think that's fair. Um, and I thought the team played well behind him, and I liked all four lines going. I, so if I have to say something, I loved how four lines were buzzing. They're all going. But, you know, to to if an Oilers fan is going to bed tonight thinking, oh, my God, we're, we're going to beat Vegas for sure. We pounded them tonight. That team will not be the same because I, now I don't know what Stone's going to be. I, he may not be back. Uh, you know, who knows when he'll be back. But Chandler Stevens is a really good player for them. Uh, Pet Chandler is a really, really good defenseman for them. So that's at least a second line center, and your when your top two D men, that's a lot to miss out. So let's say for the orders, they they have they had McDavid out, but let's say they take out, I guess they'd have to be uh, Leon, and then you take out who, Nurse, and then see how it looks for the orders. So it's you got to be careful when you're valuing a win this late in the season with this many injuries. And Aiden Hill, wow. like Aiden Hill, looked at times I thought he had roller skates on. I, I wonder if they sharpened them. <laughs> you're. Uh... 
you're getting beat up a little here on the uh, YouTube stream here, what? Struddy, and I know this will be devastating to you, Nathan. <laughs> Uh, who's saying what here? Uh, Mike Smith says, Struddy, that's two consecutive games you've told the fans to downplay the wins. Yeah. Boo. So he just gives you a hard boo. Chad Jenkins reminds you, Jason, you can only beat the players put in front of you. Fair point. Um, Pradninsky says, okay, they also picked up three good, pretty good players who all played tonight. Along with the fact McDavid wasn't in the lineup, this was a good win. Uh, what else? Struds is the villain of this trio, says MTJ Disorder. And Mike Smith says Jason Strudwick is just a Donny Downer. What say you, Brownie? Are the people being too hard on Struds? <laughs> or is Struds kind of, you know, a little aggressive here with his uh, negative Nancy stuff? Well, again, this this is not the Vegas team you'll see in the playoffs. No, it's not. But the Oilers... I thought played a very solid game. Um, Vegas, again, Vegas is missing five guys. Uh, they're missing Carrier and, and Nicholas Waugh as well. Both good hockey yeah. players. Yeah. This is, a, it's, they're not near as good. And Aiden Hill, will, we saw what Aiden Hill's capable of doing. But I, I still think the Oilers played well. They came out, I thought the third line was excellent. I thought the fourth line created. Um, they limited Jack Eichel and, and, and Jonathan show. They played discipline. No stupid penalties. So, yes, this was not the Vegas Golden Knights from the playoffs last year, and, and probably not even close to them. But the Oilers can only do what they can do with the lineup they're playing against. And I thought they were good. I thought the Oilers played a, a very sound hockey game. And to me, I don't even think you have to worry about the Vegas Golden Knights. I think the Golden Knights will be playing Dallas in the first round. Yeah. I think the Oilers right now – and I think I honestly think now the Oilers are going to be playing Nashville because the Vancouver Canucks, last I looked, are losing 3-1 to Arizona. So now Edmonton doesn't even have to win every game to beat Vancouver in the standings. So um, this, is, this was, to me, a solid victory tonight. And also it was a showcase for some players looking for a little extra ice time come playoff time, and those players all showed up. When you know that your guy that plays 24 minutes a night is out of the lineup, you're sad, but you also got a little bit of excitement because you know you're getting more ice time than you normally do. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I liked about the game, Struds, and then you can shit on it. Um, <laughs> I like the fact that the Edmonton Oilers look like an extremely fast team, but not just offensively. They were a fast team in both directions tonight. I thought they did an excellent job tonight backtracking I thought Corey Perry was excellent in that regard tonight multiple times where he was back how about Leon Dreisaitl turns the puck over off the rush he got back like his life depended on it multiple back checks from Leon Dreisaitl I thought the orders played fast and injecting 55 helps that they look speedy to me struts they did, yeah, and there's no doubt about it. Like I, I let, so let's let's now talk about what they did really well, and then maybe I won't reflect so much on what a, a, a thin lineup of the Vegas was. But there was a lot of good things, obviously, and 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 the speed is definitely one. Um, I, I like the the pressure they put on the Vegas D men. That is something that um, I thought Vegas did really well against the Oilers last year in the playoffs. And they want to be able to do that to other teams. You want to be able to make those D-men make plays before they're ready or able to make plays. So I think that was something to really notice. And I, and I, I know, although it wasn't a D-man, uh, the way that Aiden Hill came back and when, when Holloway scored his goal, I don't think that Aiden Hill was expecting an owner coming in that fast. Like he, he, he looked out of sorts, but all of a sudden he just leaves the puck and comes out in front slowly. And Holloway says, thank you. And just wraps it around. So I think again, getting on those guys before they're, they think they need to are able to make a play, whether it's a goalie or D, that is something I'm really going to look for in the last, uh, what do we got here? Shogger 10 days. Yeah. Give or take Brownie, your thoughts kind of overall, did, uh, did they look faster to you? They look faster to me. Looks well, they, well, it's funny. It's, you think, well, they put Dylan Hollow in. Well, yeah, they're going to be faster, but you took Connor McDavid out. So no, you're not faster. <laughs> uh, I just, I just think that this is a, a good hockey club. And I know that there's a lot of talk about not playing. And he's the best in the world. That hurts your team. But the Oilers are a good team with or without Connor McDavid. The Oilers could go on a run in the playoffs without Connor McDavid. They are that deep now. Now, they, uh, you do not want to play a, a lot of games without 97, but they're capable of winning. So 
I, I like the injection of Holloway with McLeod and Perry. I think you've got two guys with speed to burn with a man that has he, he does his feet don't move as fast, but his brain does. He thinks the game very well. And I thought that third line looked excellent in this hockey game. We are going to talk at length about Dylan Holloway, what he showed tonight, what it potentially means. What could he be capable of between now and the end of the season? We're going to dig into that a little deeper in our second segment in takeaways uh, because he definitely entered the chat here in a number of different ways. So the Dylan Holloway conversation is on the way. Let's get to the Weiss Johnson sound box. They're offering 200 bucks off their Fantech HEPA filter system. Be proactive. Keep the air in your home clean, right? If we have more forest fires this year, hopefully we don't. But if we do, uh, this system can help keep your co home comfortable and it'll be helpful to those with respiratory issues. Contact him for this amazing deal by visiting Weiss-Johnson.com. The people Weiss need the Johnson, jingle. Uh, Zach Hyman post game. Here he is. Yeah, it's amazing when you're connected, how much faster you look as a team. Um, when you're not thinking, you just have five guys on the same page. It, the game just seems easier and it looks faster um, from the outside. So I just thought we were a connected group today. Matias Ekholm continues to crush its struds. His game is next level. I talked to him earlier today before the game. Figures it's the best hockey he's played in, you know, a few years for sure. That bomb of his, like, what? Uh, he just absolutely uncorked that one. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, this this is, like, Matias Ekholm is just going lights out here at the perfect time. Yeah, he is. And I think for that goal, let's give credit to Ryan McLeod, who uh, zipped that puck right through the 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 – the kind of the, the that golden road perfectly on the tape and then and then he loves that slap shot it actually reminds me of a rod brown slap shot i see on the ice or out there <laughs> and just bombs right over the shoulder it was a great great shot but yeah he's he is i'm surprised you didn't say that uh, he'll look like crap on it and anybody could have put that in I'm surprised Stratty, you know, that you're I, actually doling out some love here I've already made my aiden hill statement and i think it's still <laughs> fair but I, I i just think that what 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 i didn't expect from ekholm uh, I, I expect him to be very good defensively and to kind of be the nice compliment to Bouchard to keep him out of trouble. I didn't expect him to be able to add this level of offense. I think this was his 11th goal in a career year um, for him. And so he's he's doing it at both ends of the ice, which I think is just incredible. I mean, between the two of those guys, they got to have – what has Bouchard got? Has he got 15 goals? Is he, what has he added around that? Uh, yeah, I can check it here quick. So, but they're, Let's say they're between 20, 30 goals as a partnership. Like that's that's pretty damn good for uh, for two D men. Brownie, well, you know what? When when they when they traded for Ekholm, I, when we watched Nashville, Ekholm would transport the puck up the ice, and he would make plays. Now, again, we talked about before he played behind Roman Yossi, who's uh, top three in the world, and he didn't have to shine all the time, Ekholm, because he had Yossi that that was his responsibility. But I think they've kind of taken the handcuffs off a little bit here. Uh, the Oilers play a little more up-tempo, obviously, than Nashville does. And so I, I, was, I expected Ekholm to be great defensively. I expect him to be good offensively. What I didn't – what I'm surprised by is the shot. I mean, you, you look – well, Vetchkin's got a favorite place. Drysaddle's got a, a, a favorite place. Nugent Hopkins always goes low blocker. Goal scorers have a place that they like to go at. It's their go-to. You don't usually see a defenseman that has a go-to shot. And Ekholm does. You're, you're, when he gets it and he's got time, it's going to be a slap shot. It's going top glove every time. And he hits it with consistency. And there's, there's not a goalie in the league that's going to stop that. I, I mean, that's a bomb coming from 25 feet out. He's going if, – if he hits his spot, it's going in the net. So I think to me that's just the biggest surprise for me. Not that the fact that he can create offensive plays or he makes the nice passes, but the fact that he's got a, a spot that he knows if he's got time he's going to pick it and he's going to hit it, and that's what sets him above. And I think all the players that the Oilers have, he might be the most missed if he's out of the lineup. Connor's the best in the world, but you've got the second best in the world in the lineup if he's missing a game. It's a bigger drop-off from Ekholm 
to the next defenseman, I believe, on the Edmonton Oilers. It would be, I mean, you're, you're taking away a guy that's plus 45 on the season or whatever out of your lineup if he's not in there. I think that the Oilers, that's a player that they cannot afford missing games in the playoffs. We got to name that thing. Like the, the Eck Bomb or the, Eck, the... How about the Eck Blast? Eck Blast? Well, that's not bad. The Boosh, the, Blast? Yeah, the Boosh Bomb and the Eck Blast. Yeah, that's pretty good. But it's pretty crazy. I just looked it up. So between the two of them, they have 28 goals. This yeah, 17 year. for Bouchard. You're that's crazy. Yeah. Like that's that I mean, that's that's really good. Like that's first, that's well over first pairing. Like that's pretty impressive. Eck hammer? No, no, we're not gonna do oh, that. Obelisk uh, no, said call it Thor's hammer. That's not bad. <laughs> I think we got to skip the hammer idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, think there's, I think there's a flag. Not, the flag. not to be the no. bad guy again, but anything related to hammers, I think we're going to let's skip. just let's just keep that uh, out of there. Uh, okay, Bob's your uncle. Brownie is bang on as well tonight. Ekholm does love that spot. All three of you are on fire tonight, says Bob's your uncle. So he's liking oh. he's liking the performance that the three of us are bringing. Zuby, he's not showing the same appreciation for you. I'm assuming. Actually, he probably means me, Brownie, and Zuby. I would think. <laughs> what? Well, I'm the one. Who's, I'm telling you guys what I think. That's uh, that's what I get uh, those free gift certificates for. Let's see if you can redeem yourself with the relentless player of the night. Oh, Struds, yeah. uh, you can. Youth Services, of course, an Edmonton charity, relentless in helping youth. Age 16 to 24, get out of harm's way and find employment back in our community. Visit youcan.ca to see how your donation can change lives right here in our community. Who gets... The Kyle Dubé relentless player of the night, night award. Well, you haven't liked my performance so far. You're not going to like this one. I'm going with the coach, Chris Knobloch. What? We, we yes. Hold on. Let me get it out. Let what? me spit. Let me spit the fire. So today the Oilers had everyone was within 12 minutes and under 20 minutes except for two D men. They were like 20 minutes and 30 seconds. I recognized the game. I got a little out of hand there. But I like that everyone was crunched in amount that time. So that means the guys at the bottom were getting extra ice time and the guys at the top came down a bit. But not that it was an off night and a rest night, but no one got overtaxed. And that is something I think you want to look for as you go through these, these last two games. Get everyone playing who can play and then make sure you don't overtax the guys. So for that, I give Chris Knobloch the relentless player. I believe that's the first one in history a coach has got. It definitely is. Brownie, what say you to that? I'm not sure that's really what relentless is. Um, Kyle Dubé is not happy line, right now. <laughs> no, I think the third line having three goals tonight would might be relentless. Chris Knobloch saying, all right, we got a 5-1 lead. I'm going to play all four lines. I mean, Strad, it's not everyone has a great night every night. Sometimes your star players have an off night. And, yeah. That's maybe, Struddy tonight maybe, is what you're saying. What? That, I, I'm saying, I'm saying that I think Struddy lied when he said he wasn't partaking in the festivities yeah. in Fort no. St. John tonight. No. All I heard you say, Brownie, is sometimes your star players have an off night, so you're recognizing greatness. Uh, but I can't oh, give to the third line guys. It, it was, it was, you are a star goals, player. But, but less, the, the, the third line had three goals. Two were by D men. One was off a. A shot that was going through the crease. I can't, I can't get too excited about that uh, performance. Mike Smith says, "What struds? You aren't spitting fire. You're spitting cranberry sauce." Knobs adjustments <laughs> were good, but predictable. <laughs> Quaddy says, "Relentless refs for not penalizing us." Oh, and Materi says, "Knob is a buddy coach." Don't know what that meant. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Struddy has no road game," <laughs> said Obelisk Twenty One. "You're on the road, Struddy." And you got, <laughs> you <got> no road <laughs> Jeez, taking a lot of heat. You know what? I stand by one. all my comments. I love it. Oh, I love it, buddy. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Okay, uh, still lots of talk. I want to dig into Dylan Holloway a little bit. I think you guys know I've been talking for months and months about the role <laughs> I feel he potentially could play, and I'm not going to overdo it based on one game tonight. But I thought it was a good performance, and I wonder what it potentially opens the door towards. So we're going to dive into that in our takeaway segment coming up next. Struddy, go splash some water on your face, bud. <laughs> I got this, man. <laughs> 
The fastest growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0, stay smooth, gentlemen. You know, I got into refing for the excitement. He's going for the chair. Turns out wrestling is completely scripted. But you know what's exciting and unscripted? PlayAlberta.ca with an all-new sports book, odds boosts, and betting on any game. PlayAlberta.ca. Go all in on excitement. Sign up today with promo code SPORTS50 and get a $50 free bet. Official gaming partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Remember, if you gamble, use your game sense. Time now for our takeaways brought to you by Dr. Tyler Fix and Redefined Health. A properly moving and working body is essential to joining to joint health and nervous system function using various techniques like massage therapy, active release, Graston. They work to improve range of motion and soft tissue issues. Visit redefinedhealth.com. They can help fix your knee too. And golfing up a storm because the knees are feeling good. Uh, Dylan Holloway, gentlemen, steps into the lineup tonight. And, you know, the first thing he did was he went out and threw a really good body check. And I imagine, you know, after this time he spent in the American Hockey League, he gets back into the lineup. And to get something done like that right away, uh, Struds, uh, I thought it was a good welcome back to the National Hockey League. I liked the intention that he started the game with. Overall, what, what did you think, man? What I liked about it and something he has to really kind of continue to work on is, um, and, and for playoff hockey, is holding the puck in the offensive zone and making plays down there. So we know he can skate fast and get to the neutral zone, and, and those are it's a great skill to have. But in the playoffs, I feel like the neutral zone game kind of goes away. You're not scoring a ton off the rush. So you got to be able to create, hold on to the puck and kind of, to use an antiquated term, cycle the puck down low, use your teammates, support each other, get it up to the D, Try to get shots through from the point and crash the net. It's not the sexiest, but that's how you know it kind of has success in the playoffs. So I thought today I saw signs that he has been working on that and he's kind of improving in that area, Brownie. I thought it was very good. Um, I, I think that he had an advantage playing tonight as opposed to earlier in the year when he had his looks because he, he was playing averaging, what, seven, eight minutes a night or he'd coming out of the press box. You're never really in the swing of things. He just came up from the minors where he's playing 20, 25 minutes a night. He was ready. It was He jumped in there, and he like he had legs. He felt confident with the puck on his stick. Uh, so And it showed, and it showed in his game. Before the game, I, when we were talking about Holloway, I said, Holloway right now, if the playoff start is on the outside looking in, because the Oilers have four guys they rotate on the fourth line. Tonight, Derek Ryan was out. He's a penalty killer. <laughs> The other guys on the fourth line are all penalty killers. If Holloway comes in and you pull out a Yanmark or a Brown or a Carrick, now you're pulling two penalty killers out. I don't know. And Holloway doesn't penalty kill. He doesn't play on your power play. So you're going to have a hard time finding a spot for him in the playoffs. Having said all of that, the way he played tonight, he's going to have to make or allow the coaching staff to make some tough decisions. But the Holloway, what his one big strike against him right now is he doesn't penalty kill in the whole fourth line. All four of those guys do. By the way, he was doing some penalty killing in the American Hockey League, uh, was playing center as well. And M. Materi reminding us he just wrote in a hat trick game in the American Hockey League. He came in definitely feeling it confidence wise. Okay, so the conversation about what does it mean moving forward? Let's have that. But first, Zuby, we have the do we have the question I asked uh, Chris Knobloch tonight about um you grabbed the Knobloch clip, right, on Holloway? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, let's hear from the head coach. You know, he played a really good game. He played, you know, what we expected. We ex you know, know that what he's about and we'd never been upset with him. We just felt uh, um 
we got so many good players and he can continue playing and developing his game. And I think uh, down in Bakersfield, he's worked really hard and added some elements to his game. You know, the confidence of scoring goals. And um, yeah, absolutely. We're very open to the fact that um, they could be back together on Friday. What do you recall yeah. about your conversation or messaging with him when he went down? And, you know, he talked about he definitely sees the value in having played the, the sheer amount of minutes that he's played down there. Yeah, I think it was good. I think it was, it's not always easy sending a player down in the American League. Uh, they're always disappointed. And, and, you know, there's a case that he could stay here and play continually. And, um, but, you know, I think a couple things. One, him going down and playing the amount of minutes he did at center um, helped him touch the puck more, um, more defensively responsible, uh, and also being relied on in a lot more situations. And, um, you know, the conversation was just go down and play with your edge and work on the offensive part of it, a lot of puck protection. And even when he was down in Bakersfield, I still reached out to him, talked to him, and checked him because I was getting reports on how he was playing and um, just encouraging him to keep that up. So this is my submission to you. I'm not saying Dylan Holloway is going to be in the lineup game one of the playoffs. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is when you put a line like that together, Struds, and they have a night like they had tonight, I think you have no choice but to give them another look. You got to go back to that. You're still at a point in your season where it's not like their lines are just locked in and everybody knows what they are and you couldn't possibly mess with the amazing chemistry they've had in their top nine. That's not the case at all. When you see something like that, you've got to go back to it to see what you have. Do you not? Um, yeah, I, I think I would um, to check it out, to, to, to see how it all fits together. But that's kind of the, the – I think that Perry needs some speed when he plays, whoever he plays with, right? Although I have been advocating for Kane to be with him. Like, actually, I, I think at one point I said Henrique, Kane, and Perry. But when he had that speed, it did look really good today. I, but I will go back with Brownie. Like I, if everyone's healthy, you know, who, who's coming off that third line? Who's the, who's the guy that's coming off that third line to, to, uh, to, you know, to, to make room for Holloway on that third line. Yeah. And it's not, yeah, I, agree. I mean, it's go ahead, Brownie. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I agree with Struds is it, when, when Connor McDavid's back in, who are you pulling out of your lineup for Holloway? That That's the thing. Now I think Holloway will play Friday. Cause I think, well, if McDavid, uh, he may take another day off. If he does, it's easy. Yeah. Holloway stays in. But if if McDavid comes back in the lineup, who do you pull out? You, the, the fourth line, all penalty kill. So you're not taking one of those guys out of the lineup. So now... Well, even just go... Just simplify it, down and go... The t who's the top nine? Who are the top nine? If, if like So we, we don't well, have to worry about the fourth line. Like, if Holloway is the well, third no, line the left top, winger, who's out? Well, he's Who's not, he's not going to be the third-line left winger. That's the thing, because that's where Kane's going to play. Kane will be the third-line left winger. Right. So that bumps Holloway down now to the fourth line, right? So I don't yeah. think that line's a possibility. I guess the point I'm making, I don't think that line's a possibility, Shogger, at least not when well, everyone's healthy. okay, but remember the other thing I've been saying is that Evander Kane needs to get into the top six on this team. For this oh, team to go deep into the playoffs, yeah. he needs to be on one okay. of the top two. He needs to be playing in a way where they have no choice but to have him there. And that's fair. So that means it's either McLeod or Fogel that go down, right? So ninety. So let me ask you this, and this came in on the stream a little bit earlier. One of the things with Connor McDavid not in the lineup, and I, I, I I'm not positive he's going to play next game either. I could see him in that Saturday game against Vancouver would make the most sense to me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so it gives you an opportunity to check out some other things and to see some other things, right? Well, we saw twenty nine ninety three and eighteen tonight, and I liked it. I, I thought it was. Pretty good. I didn't mind it. We'll probably end up seeing it again. So if those guys play well together, now you've got an opportunity to maybe try something a little bit different with McDavid when he gets back. Maybe that's what you need, Brownie, to go, oh, let's throw Evander Kane next to McDavid. Let's throw Adam Henrique on the other side. Let's try that for a top six matrix because the dry side of line worked pretty good with, with Nugent Hopkins and with Zach Hyman. And then that allows Ryan McLeod well, to sit in that third center spot, Dylan Holloway on his wing, Fogel over on the other side. The answer would be Anmark. That's the answer to who potentially comes out. But are, 
aren't we missing somebody coming out of the top nine? That if you got Holloway in there, Fogel. Oh, you got, oh you're moving Kane up. Fogel's coming Kane out of your up, top Fogel nine. Down. He's going on the on the fourth line then. No, so Perry, so 51, 55, 71, oh, so and taking, 37, or 55, so 71, and 90, it. depending on how it's going, right? Depending on how Perry's moving, depending on the matchup, he and Fogel can flip-flop back and forth between those that, yeah, that but, right but those then right again, But then you're taking Yanmark out. Now, you're taking, now you have two penalty killers in the stands. They have more players that can penalty kill. They have, but, but they don't, last though, time Dylan Holloway was don't. here... They added two more brownie. They add, they added Henrique, who can penalty kill. They added uh, Carrick, who can penalty kill. They have having one penalty killer yeah. come out of the lineup to inject. There's, no, there's Steve. two penalty. There's two penalty killers coming out because Ryan's out right now, and if you keep Holloway, and you're pulling another penalty killer out, so there will be two penalty killers coming out of the lineup. But they still have. You've still got Nugent okay. Hopkins can penalty kill. Yep. Yep. You've still got Carrick can, can can penalty kill when he's in, or Ryan can penalty kill when he's in. No, no, just okay, let's okay, let's pull out Ryan and Yanmark. Give me six guys that are penalty killers. Six forwards. Nugent yeah, Hopkins. Give me six forwards that are penalty killers. Yep. Nugent Hopkins, Henrique. Yep. Um. Ba, 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 ba. I'll help you, so Yanmark. Yanmark would stay. Okay, okay. So you're saying yeah. Yanmark's still in. So Yanmark, yep. So now yeah, I took out Carrick and I took out Ryan. So Yanmark. Okay. So you don't have six. That's the thing. Yeah, Holloway's not going to. They, 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 if, they, if they like the other, other guys' penalty killing, they'd be penalty killing now. They're not. Right now, they're rotating. The four guys in your bottom, bottom line are all penalty killers, and three of them are playing one sitting out. If you put Holloway in and take someone out, then all of a sudden now you're one penalty killer yeah, short. But... I don't think, and I don't, and I, Leon played well with Nugent Hopkins and Hyman. They're always going to play well together. That's going to be Connor's spot. I am not, we have not seen Evander Kane play in the top six in how long? Yeah. When's the last? So to me, they find him more comfortable on the third line. Because it, we've, we've gone a month and a half and he's been playing on the third line. There's been plenty of opportunities to move him in the top six. They like what their top six is. I think Leon likes playing with Henrik. I think they, they like Fogel there. Mm -hmm. I understand where you, you think Kane should play there because he can be aggressive and he can change the game with physicality. But the Oilers haven't put him there in a long, long time. So I'm not sure all of a sudden Holloway comes in. Okay, now we can give Kane top six minutes playing with Connor. When's the last time he played with Connor McDavid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were on a line together quite quite a quite some time ago um, during this regular season. I don't know, guys. I think I think Strud's where I'm coming from with all of this. And again, not to overstate it with Holloway, he played a good game tonight. I think they need to keep him in and keep that line together, keep giving it a look because they were really really good tonight. Um, but I think it's because it's not like they have this top six or top nine matrix that is just so good. It's that, that it's untouchable. And by the way, Brownie, they've got all these penalty killers in the lineup right now. Their penalty kill hasn't been that good. It hasn't yeah, been but for I'm, some I'm time just now. You, but this is this is who they penalty kill. So you're not all of a sudden going to start new guys penalty killing in game 81 yeah, okay. of the season say, all right, mm -hmm. here you go. And two, you just said they've got to let them run with this line. So now you just put Fogel on your fourth line. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I feel that with Holloway, he's gonna when playoffs start. If he NSA goes down, he's not gonna be in the starting lineup. I think they're gonna go with the group that has, for the most part, been here all year, and then I think Holloway comes in for the spark. I, I really feel that way. What if he plays well through the final games here, Struds? What if he keeps getting opportunity and keeps playing well and adds speed and adds physicality, chips in the odd goal? You really gonna yank that guy from your lineup? Well, yeah, I probably will. I, I, I and it's I just because I don't know where he fits. I don't see where he fits in right now. I agree with yeah. you, Struts, too. If if they had, if they trusted him to be in their lineup right now, he'd be playing here. He wouldn't have been in the minors. They didn't trust him before when he was up here. I like Dylan Holloway. I do. I've been a huge fan of him, but he is not someone that they this the group that they have here has put together an incredible run. They have a chance to win their division. Now you're going to take 
you know what, this guy that's been in the minors for the last month, he's going to take your spot. Even though you've done everything we've asked you to do yeah. and contributed. And now we're going to take, we're going to put this guy from the minors and I don't see that happening. I see Dylan Holloway being your first option out of the press box if things go sideways or if there's an injury. But I, I think that you go with the horse that brought you in. And this, this group of players that they've got right now have put together an incredible run for Chris Knobloch. How do you say Yanmark or Carrick or Fogel or Perry? You know what? This kid from the minors, he had a really good run in the minors, so we're going to play him ahead of you. Never trusted him the first 30 games of the season, but now <laughs> that we're in the big game, I'm going to start playing him. What about what you said to Dylan Holloway when you sent him down? What about the message that go down there, work on your game, focus on these areas of your game, there's a space for you with this team. And that's definitely well, has to be the messaging sure. with Dylan Holloway. And then he comes back and he's clearly worked on those things. And he's, I think you need to pay attention to what's right in front of your nose. I don't think yeah, that any he, of these fourth line players have done team, enough. Though. What's that? I, I, he is part of the team. Being up here in the playoffs, in the press box part of the team, you know, you just be, Strud and I have been sent to the minors and we've been told things that we come up doesn't always come to fruition. The guys on the fourth line, have, they have done a good job. I think they've, they've been fine. I thought the fourth line as of late has been very good. Yeah. I thought the, the Calgary game, the fourth line was, I thought, might have been their best line. So, and the, I mean, the Oilers are pulling good players out of the lineup. Derek Ryan doesn't deserve to be in the press box. He played well. The games that Carrick's come out, we're like, how can he be pulled out? He, he just fought that guy. He scored a goal. There's good players for the Edmonton Oilers that are sitting in the press box, and that's a good thing because I have been with the Oilers for 18 years now, and there were a lot of years where there were bad players in the lineup because they had <laughs> no other players to put in there. The Oilers now have depth where they have good players that they can bench, and that gives the Oilers options. If things go sideways, team matchups or injuries, the Oilers are much better off than they've been in all of the 18 years that I've been here. So, Brownie, you don't think it matters what Holloway might be able to get done between now and the end of the regular season? I talk about in he so if he has hey. ten good days in the NHL. If he has ten good days as the season comes to a close <laughs> in a lineup that's looking for, you know, looking to start the playoffs well. So you guys are saying it doesn't well, matter what Holloway does between now and the end. It shouldn't matter well, for game one of the playoffs. It would have it would have to be someone else would have to actually come fail but it, this is a team that what's their record under Knobloch with these players that he has yeah. does it not matter that Yanmark and Ryan and Carrick and uh, Fogel and all these guys were part of this incredible turnaround that what if he outplays him? a chance to win the division huh? what if he outplays him between now and the end of the season he outplayed about five guys tonight up so, front. so you're talking about if he outplays I, someone for 10 days out of a 180 day season you got to decide who to put in game one of your lineup. <laughs> Hell yeah. I Again, think that matters. Hell yeah. I, 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 Dylan Holloway, I, I, yeah, no, I, 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 I just don't understand his role. I asked you to name me six penalty killers. You yeah. didn't. Well, you could, McDavid and Drysaddle have both killed penalties. Not that you don't, that that's yeah, but, ideal. Yeah, but you're not, but they're not, no, yeah, but they're not putting those guys at the penalty kill. They've got a, a system set up. He knows exact. Knobloch knows what he wants. He's got Connor and Leon coming out right after the penalty end. He's going to catch the other team that way. He's got guys that he trusts as his penalty killers. And two of them would have to sit out if Dylan Holloway plays. Dylan Holloway's not going to penalty kill in the NHL right now. You are not mm -hmm. starting his penalty killing career in game 80 of a, for a team <laughs> that has aspirations of winning a Stanley Cup. Maybe next year, Dylan. By the way, I never killer. said he should. I never said he'd be killing penalties. No. no, but you did say that he killed penalties in the minors, which means nothing right now for the Oilers. I'm yeah. just saying that this team right now, with take Dylan out of it, this team right now, before Dylan got called back up, had an incredible turnaround. They've been fantastic. They've yeah. set themselves up that if they run the table, they can win the division. Nobody expected that. I say that has more leverage over a guy that had a good game tonight 
that's been in the minors for the last month. No, that's could, not what I'm saying. To... I'm saying a good run to the end of the year. Let's not let's not lose track yeah, of what I'm five... saying. I'm not saying he okay, earned it tonight. Five games. Five games. Sure? But he's no. not going to get all those games. He's not going to get them. When Connor comes back, Dylan's out. <laughs> no, but, to, but to be fair, Shog, you're talking about less than a fortnight, not to use antiquated <laughs> terms. That is a very antiquated term. I, I love the debate. And I think uh, I'm getting beat up a little bit on the stream. Some people are saying Ryan can't be serious with this. Um, too small a sample, says Jay. I think that what I think I want to see more. I do. I think what we saw from him tonight was a positive sign and it injected something that this team needs and hasn't had. And I like it. I want to see more. And I'm open to the idea that if he continues to play like that, uh, maybe he's going to put some pressure on some guys and make some guys uncomfortable. And I think that's okay. <laughs> you guys disagree. Wait, that's why it's a good. Podcast. You said okay. you also, you also, you also told us that Stetcher was going to pressure them and he was going to play too. <laughs> yeah. That would have required no. some opportunity at some point, Brownie. He's been good when he's been in, he's deserved more than he's gotten. Shocker. I, I you know what? I, I'm going to actually change my vote. I'm going to go with you. I can't say that after three periods, but give me three and a good half periods. I might look at it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Brownie, we, we went way long with this segment. Uh, way long with this segment so you're probably at home you just want to get inside and go to bed uh yes please my neighbors okay. now are starting to question what i do in my driveway yeah all right buddy we'll let you go we won't uh we won't keep you around for strutty's world but let's chat again after uh the next game shall we sounds good guys have a great night all right the great rob brown you know who we never heard from in all of this struts was Dylan Holloway. We have a Dylan Holloway clip. Let's hear from him. And then Zuby from there, you can just take us right to break. Dylan Holloway. Which one? We got two. We got uh, the emotion of being cut or the things he was asked to work on in Bakersfield. Things he was asked to work. We'll just play them both back to back and then take yeah. us to break. All right. And then we got taken a lap after the break is what I got queued up. But we, you can have Strutty's World first if you want it. Yeah, whatever. Whatever you want to do, we'll, I'll adjust. All right. Surprise. Okay. Here's Dylan. Uh, definitely some emotion when we got sent down. Uh, you know, I try to use it as an opportunity to just uh, focus on my game, try and get uh, as as good as I can, uh, focus on the little things that they want me to work on. And then, uh, yeah, when I got called up, I was pretty excited and just try to implement the things that I was working on in Bakersfield uh, into my game today. Big thing was uh, defensive uh, defensive play, just being reliable in the D zone. Um, and then another big thing is puck protection. Uh, sometimes when I get the puck in the corners, I try and uh, face the guy and uh, expose the puck a little bit. But a big thing was just to kind of use, use my body as kind of a shield and um, hold on to pucks in the corners. You see the value in, I mean, when you were here, you were trapping the corner and doing your best for minutes. With the value of going there and playing as much as you did over the stretch that you did, you see the value in that? Yeah, um, yeah. I think in the long run it uh, helped me develop a little bit. Uh, just playing in all opportunities, uh, playing lots of minutes every night. Uh, it was definitely big for me, definitely big to get my touches and my confidence up. So I was feeling pretty good. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top-of-the-line track band simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full-service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z dot C-A. A little shorter, but yeah. All right, time now to take a couple of laps brought to you by Backscape, the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. And it's even better now with their Backscape 2.0. The new friction fit handle allows you to effortlessly snap the shaver in and out to touch up the rest of your body. The new titanium shave head gives a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. We got a promo code for you. Go to Backscape.com. That's B A K scape.com and use the promo code gyb10 for 10 percent off the advanced and deluxe 2.0 kits that is backscape stay smooth gentlemen Strutty. well i think it's always interesting when there's a player poll right uh and they, oh they, yes they ask, they ask players various questions about you know different players and uh you know it's to both the men's and the women's leagues and different things so there's a couple answers that really struck me so i'm going to kind of take you through it so they went through if there was a question asked if there was a situation where you had to, have to pick one player in the league to help you win one game who would it be 
And uh, Connor McDavid, not surprisingly, got 48% of that. Uh, number two was Sidney Crosby at around 12%. Yeah. Number three was Nate McKinnon at 6.5%. And what kind of surprised me by this shocker was that um, Austin Matthews, a guy trending towards 70 goals, was not in that top three. Now, the top three guys are good. But He's I thought not in that the top was, five. Yeah, it's it's really uh, it's it's pretty amazing that a guy who's going to score seventy isn't in the players' call. And the players, I always trust the players because they they kind of got a sense of what's going on there. But I think that would be that would raise a lot of eyebrows uh, when that re- re- uh, poll was released. I'm sure today. McDavid forty eight point seven, Crosby eleven point five, McKinnon six point five, Kucherov five point three, and Artemi Panarin comes in ahead of. Austin Matthews yeah. uh, in that one. Anything else stand out to you about those? Um, about those five guys? No, about the about the player poll. I don't know if yeah, you have yes. them in front of you. Yeah, some other no. interesting stuff. Yeah, the other one I really liked was when they talk about which player is kind of hardest to uh, go against in their own end, and it was Victor Hedman. And Victor Hedman, if you're not familiar with him, he's a really tall guy, big D man for Tampa Bay, really long stick. And, you know, I think that he gets a lot of talk about his offensive ability, but he is very good defensively. He's got a really good stick and he swats that puck away. And not that I didn't think he'd be the number one guy, but I was so happy that that was a question first off, Shager. And number two, I, I think that, you know, looking at it, he is, to me, the right the right choice. So how about the fact, and again, which player is the most difficult player to face in their own end? Right. So in the, like in their defensive end. Yeah. Who's the most difficult? Connor McDavid is second at 9.4%. Yeah, that, that was a surprise. And that I'm not surprised. saying he's not a good defensive player, but I mean, think about the beasts like in front of the net. Think about yeah. the nasty defensemen out there. Think about the, the defensive stalwarts around the league. Connor McDavid is second. Yeah. Yeah, that that is that you know he's got a very quick stick, and I think that he surprises people how he can close on them so quickly. Um, but if if I'm Connor McDavid, of all the things that I was touted for in this poll, that would probably be the number one thing I'd be the proudest of, because I don't think, like you said, I don't think anyone really, a casual fan, wouldn't think of that of '97. Which player has the best style? Pasternak, fifteen percent. Willie Nylander, twelve percent. Austin Math, couple of Maple Leafs here. Yeah, Jack Hughes, nice. Patrick Kane in the mix there, and Nikita Kucherov. Actually, yeah. I want to ask you about that, Struts, because I think we all know. You know, you know what? I, I, that that one, I I actually I find I don't find it interesting at all. And like, who knows what other players are wearing? Like, how would you even know? Like, did you have to look on each other's Instagram account? Yeah, I think they do, don't they? I don't know. I don't, maybe I have no each other at all star games, and yeah, I just. I don't know. I just don't really. That doesn't do anything for me at all. Not a lot of like plugs, fourth line players in there. I mean, those are some pretty <laughs> high end guys, right? You could have an amazingly dressed fourth line player, but he's not at any all star games. So, well, but no one's taking a picture of the fourth line guy, right? Like, let's be honest. This no one wants to see the fourth line guy in his suit. Where else are we going, buddy? I just want to talk about uh, Philadelphia Flyers. So last night, really tough night if you're a Flyers. Uh, they they get pounded nine three by Walla. Canadians. Uh, give you know quick uh, two claps and roof for Slavkovsky gets his hat trick. Uh, he's he seems to be trending in the right direction, a big body. And then there was a port today, a report today out that uh, you know people are wondering about Tortorella. And there was a port today, and I want to get this right. Basically, that Torts is not leaving the bench, so he's not going to get pushed out. And I. Now, I'm a long ways away from the shot, a long ways away, but I watch, try to watch some of those games. It, it feels like the team has run out of juice and or is maybe not hearing the message from behind them as much. And that's maybe unfair to Torts, but the recent uh, results suggest that. Yeah. The, I mean, it's just completely come out from underneath them. Yeah, completely. I mean, it was it was shocking that they were where they were. So full credit. And Torts was very yes. much in the Jack Adams conversation and deserved to be. But the wheels have come tumbling off here. And I can't help but note that the wheels have come tumbling off and the timing of it coincides with him being in the headlines every day for two and a half weeks, basically. Yeah. The, yeah. And, and it's, so, again, it's very hard for, for me to say that this is the problem. But yeah, just from the from outside, after a while, it's, you know, the, and I'll, I'll go back to what I said. When they sat Sean Couturier, that's your captain. That's your lifeblood of back your to team. Back-to-back games. 
And that's a really hard thing to do. And and I, I would have to go back and look, but I feel like, I, from my recollection, since that, it has not been exactly pretty for the Flyers and their team. All right, that was Taking a Lap, brought to you by Backscape. Give us a little hint, Struddy. What's coming up in Struddy's world, bud? What are we What are we doing? What are we looking at? Are Unfortunately, yeah. something's probably going to happen that I've been uh, calling for for quite a while oh. in the NHL. So a prediction. Well, I wouldn't say it was a prediction. I, I just you've made it, in the past? Or you... It's a suggestion I've been making, and I think that many people have been making, including Marty Walsh, the NHLPA, uh, what is he, director. Yep. Okay, sounds good. Struddy's World is coming up next. Spring is here, and if you're thinking of buying a new home during the housing market hot period, contacting a mortgage broker should be your first step. Maria Gallus with Maxwell Mortgages can guide you with a stress-free experience. With access to dozens of different lenders, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you ready to put an offer in on your dream home. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here, someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Gotta look good. <laughs> Time now for Struddy's World, brought to you by Shipwreck Rum. The Brindley family's been handcrafting their rum on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts for decades now. Their vanilla is blended with natural Madagascar vanilla, gives it an incredible smoothness. Take one sip and you'll agree it's a vacation in a bottle. Take one sip and get shipwrecked order fans. Available at your local liquor retailer. And as always, please enjoy responsibly. Study? The day started out pretty exciting. Uh, and there was other people, but I'm just going to kind of go with Frank Cervalli. And he, he talked a little bit about the idea of uh, the Coyotes. And his tweet about 10 hours ago said, Breaking sources tell him that uh, the Coyotes and Smith Entertainment Group have made significant progress on the framework of an agreement to relocate their yachts to Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, and then apparently there's an NHL memo updated the, the Board of Governors as well. So it's not done, he says, but many layers. And this kind of falls on the heel of, we heard the report about the land auction that uh, the Arizona counties want to get involved in and push back from the Scottsdale mayor saying that, you know, there's no water tie-in, or so we don't have enough water for that in that area. We don't want to take that on. We don't want to supply water out of our aquifer for you there. And it would just be uh, a hard no for the mayor of Scottsdale for that to come there. And then later on, Frank follows up uh, another tweet that says, sources say Yost players have informed that something of a verbal agreement is in place to relocate to Salt Lake City. Uh, that's where the Smith group are, are at, but we've received pushback on that characterization of talk. So listen, I, I'm not an insider, but when, when, when you see multiple guys weigh in that are insiders and talk about this idea, there's, there's probably something brewing up here. Um, the it's, Marty Walsh has made his statements public about the NHLPA not wanting, you know, it's it's not acceptable anymore. We we know that some of the players are probably concerned about the the amount of money that's being lost uh, because of not having a 20,000 seat arena. It's been a long time, Shogger. A long time this franchise has been there. They've tried and it feels like it's been mismanaged pretty much the whole time it's been there. So I, I feel badly for those fans and for the people who work for the team there, but it almost feels inevitable that a relocation would make some sense uh sooner than later buddy yeah boy gary bettman has been uh the relentless player of the decade trying to <laughs> keep this team in arizona yeah. and you know maybe to his detriment he has just been a dog on a bone trying to make sure that yeah. he just can't wrap his head around not being in a market that size it's i think top five or six media markets in in in, in the entire united states and he has just been relentless in trying to keep it there but it feels like it's just been fait accompli for years now, Struds. Like at no yeah. point has it felt truly solid here in the last, I don't even know how many years, man. I cover these board of governors and it feels like we're talking about Arizona every board of governors meeting for the last decade. And if it ends up going this way, how do you think that's going to end up reflecting on Batman and his tenure and just because he's been so insistent yeah. on trying to make it work? 
Let, let's just go back from the time when, when there was a time when uh, Arizona or Coyotes, they were called, played right inside of Phoenix. Like there was downtown and it was okay. It was, it was a, not a great rink, but it was okay. There seemed to be quite a bit of buzz. I believe the problem started when they move up to Glendale. Like that's when I think that like that was a cheap building in the middle of nowhere. And I thought that was a mistake. And then we started seeing the ownership turnover. I think at one point the league owned the, the team, then the failed uh, payments to the Glendale, then they had to move into a little stinker of a box, the 5,000 seater. Like it's just, it's been one thing after another, another. And I have friends who work for that team and, you know, they're like, it's coming, it's coming. And, you know, it just doesn't feel like it's coming. It's just, you know, and, and, we keep, well, there's going to be one in Tempe. There's going to be a building here, and it's just not happening. So if you're the league and you're looking across and you see the ownership group, potential ownership group, that, what it, Smith, I think it's Ryan Smith there in Salt Lake City, a yeah. billionaire with a building with, you know, they have their arms outstretched. And and I read one report, I don't know if this is true or not, but they said that there might be a, a sale of $1.2 million or billion. Billion, yeah. Right? A, bill, a billion would go to the current owner. And then 200 million would be a relocation fee that would be a, given back to the yeah. to other teams. And I, that's a lot less than, than a, uh, an expansion fee, but I, I, you know, I, I think maybe there's something there. So I, it just feels like this has legs again, is it going to happen or not? But I just think it's, I think it's time. I think they've tried and I don't know, after hearing the mayor the other day, shut down that idea of a, that that uh, just yeah. off of Scottsdale rink, I don't know, Sean. It doesn't feel like it's going to be very positive. Hundred percent, and clearly, significant action has been taken to come up with a plan B. All the insiders were all over it today, uh, with Frank leading the charge earlier on in the day. All right, that was Strutty's World, brought to you by Shipwreck Rum. Uh, lots of great questions coming in on the stream, so we'll spend some time in our Ask Us Anything segment where you get to get involved. That is coming up next. For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high-quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18-hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop, and warm, friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. Visit www.belvederegcc.com. All right, time for Ask Us Anything, and we mean anything. Whatever you <laughs> want to talk about, Struddy and I are going to be open books for you here for the next five to seven minutes. Match Eatery and Public House, our sponsor for this segment. Your destination for all the sports action. Big screens, ice cold beer, all your pub favorites perfected. Match Eatery and Public House, adjacent to Rogers Place in the Grand Villa Casino. If you're going to the game, fantastic spot to get your evening started. Maybe your afternoon if you want to get started a little early. And if you want to stop in after the game as well, Match is right there. Perfectly located. Check them out at matchpub.com to see all that they have to offer. Was in there the other day. Oh, man, their hot chicken sandwich. So good, Struds. Definitely going back for another one before the playoffs start. Great food and great vibe in there. Every time I go in, I love it. 100%. Zuby, hop on in here, bud. Want to know, uh, I don't know, do we do we do a poll on this one, Zuby, really quick? I want to know what, uh, what people think. Does what Dylan Holloway does between now and the end of the season matter? Does he have the opportunity to earn his way into the lineup? And maybe you don't have time to throw up a poll, but I'd be interested to hear what people have to say because that was a good debate about that. What's the stream saying? Yeah, actually, this uh, lots of really excellent stuff on the stream today. I'm going to start out by saying um, happy birthday to our friend Steve Taylor, of course. It's his birthday oh, today. Steve he's on the stream, so he's having a wonderful Taylor. birthday here watching watching Got Your Back. Apparently happy it's birthday, not that buddy. good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and an and a early, uh, early uh, submission to me for uh, play of the day came from Quaddy. He said, so what we learned from that player poll is that the Leafs are all style and no substance. Oh, <laughs> oh that's hey. a good... That Boom. is a good shirt. Um, Boom. Penner's Pancakes uh, said, it's refreshing to have the depth where legit NHLers are scratched and tough decisions have to be made. Following that up, Mike Smith said, when you guys when, when that debate was going on, he said, is this debate an inadvertent compliment to Ken Holland? Uh, we're saying we have a bit of a luxury here in our available choices and options for our forward line. Sounds like it. Yeah. 
Yeah, they got better players. I mean, they they do. They they upgraded. They brought in Sam Carrick. They brought in Adam Henrique. They got Dylan Holloway back from the minors right now. Derek Ryan's game has picked up struds. Like the bottom six right now is looking like they're going to be able to put together a pretty good collection of six players to back up the top two lines. Yeah. And then the, the the next thing is to get them all to have like an identity, a line, kind of some line identities, and this yeah. is what we do. This is how we do it. Um, so yeah, it's it's there, there's the pieces there. You know, are, do we know exactly how they fit together? I'm not sure we're there yet, uh, but pretty soon we run out of time, so we'll know. You know, would you uh, would you say Struds that consistent speed, for checking prowess, and physicality might contribute towards the bottom six having. An identity? Would you maybe suggest <laughs> that might be accurate or true? It feels like a leading question, and oh, it's so leading. You know, I, 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 I'll just, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I think Dylan Holloway is on the team next year, and I, I, I love the idea of what he is. But ten good days in the NHL, you know, it's kind of tough. And usually, most players have a great first game when they get called back up. Zuby got the poll up, so we'll see. We'll we'll finish off the pod with the results from that poll. Zuby, keep it rolling, pal. A couple of other comments on that same topic. Uh, Jaden Bulbuck said, no point screwing up all these lines before playoffs for a guy from the minors. I thought that's oh, kind yeah, of screwing a... Screwing up all these perfectly <laughs> formed lines that have been so effective and consistent. Why would you want to mess with the amazing consistency these four lines have had, Struds? Yeah. I got it again. It's the first game and against a Vegas team that's missing significant chunks of their lineup. I, I agree. It's just one game. Um, on the as it relates open. to, to the open, just a little for <laughs> Neil Garrity said, Is Holloway's development more important than winning a cup? No, God, no. I guess, yeah, that's obvious, but that's you don't have to, you can do both at the same time. If he outplays other players, play them. As, as it relates specifically to the penalty kill, Troy said, what's the, uh, just a couple different opinions on either side of it here. Troy says, what's this fasc fascination with PKers for four to six minutes a night? Good grief. Um, Norm Camp says, in my opinion, playing the PK can be taught. It's not rocket science. 71 or 55 have enough speed to play there. And I saw a comment in one of our uh, promos or something earlier today on Twitter, just someone who said, uh, in the playoffs, the penalty kill is more important than the power play. Um, so there's a lot to you guys pick and choose whatever you like yeah. from any of that. If someone's so number one, it, it can't just be taught in, in, in a game, like there's instincts, there's understanding where to be. So it'd be irresponsible to put someone who hasn't killed regularly at the NHL level into a penny kill role in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, on the, in the playoffs, irresponsible. So it's not happening. Don't just uh, number, number two. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't. I wouldn't say that the penalty kill is more important than the power play, but I think that they're both really important. You both, both want them going and, and making it happen, Shogger. Yeah, I mean, I think you should throw in be in there to kill penalties. I think there are other players that have experience killing penalties, right? Like, I mean, we didn't mention Ryan McLeod when we were rattling off the penalty killers there. Uh, you know, I think yeah. Fogel has the ability to, if he needs to, McDavid and Drysaddle have both done it, and it's not ideal. Connor but, Brown. Uh, yeah, Connor Brown, hundred percent. Yeah, we we definitely needed to mention him too. Like for the speed that he has the opportunity to add to this lineup, if he's handling the puck well, the play isn't dying on his stick. He's good on the boards in his own end, and he's creating havoc in the offensive zone with a really good forecheck. Like this is not a plug they're bringing up. This is a high pedigree first round draft pick who might maybe be discovered something here and i think you need to create a pathway to just see what he can do with it i'm just beating this dead horse <laughs> um thrashing I, it good thrashing. good good point from ck pawn he said dry was more self-aware he didn't have batman with him he knew he had to be the leader tonight did you guys see that in his game yes okay he was good he was really good and then this little creeping closer i think his details will keep tightening up um, fraud chicken says since March 3rd, Vinny and Kulak have played a higher percentage of their time on ice against elite competition compared to nurse and CC. Do you think that continues going into the playoffs? Yeah, I saw that one the other day and it was really interesting. Some uh, stats pulled out quality of competition stats. I think it's interesting. I think that they're testing different guys. They've tried to mix the pairings around a little bit. 
I think they're going to rely pretty heavily on Nurse when playoff time comes, those struts. Yeah, I would agree with that. But it's nice for those guys to get those minutes and, and, and to, to see what it feels like and to do it. Like you're just you, – you've got the guys set up, but you're always trying to improve them and improve their confidence because it's, it's if you can do it in the regular season, you should be able to at least compete in the, in the, in the playoffs. So, yeah, I, I saw that too, and I, I liked it. And that – I mean – I think Knobloch actually referred to it as one of the strongest pairs, if not the strongest third pair in the league. And I yeah. would have a hard time disagreeing with that. They're damn good and not a bad value at like three and a half million, whatever it is. Uh, Penner's Pancakes said Vegas really had no sustained pressure at all tonight. I was I was watching the um, the TNT or whatever. I was watching the US feed and they were talking about that uh, quite a bit. And obviously we've talked about what they didn't have in their lineup, but Struds, maybe what did you see about how did the Oilers avoid that forecheck tonight? What did they do? Um, well, I think the big thing is they're moving the puck quickly. You know, they just, and, and you heard Hyman talk about it. Uh, we were connected. And so what, what that means, and it's a cliche, but you're the guy who has the puck always has someone to pass it to. It means that, you know, the D men are getting up in the play when there's an offensive rush so that you're connected with the forwards. They can use you. But also it's the same thing when you're coming back in your own end, the forwards are hustling back. So now you can make a pass to them and you're connected again. So that's what, when you hear guys saying we're connected or playing together, that's what that means. That, that cliche explained in English. Did, did you feel like, I almost felt like the way Hyman said that, that it was like directed at someone, but I did, but I wouldn't begin to guess who like it or, you know, or do you think he's just saying this is different from other games? Like I felt like there, I, I couldn't he's put not my the finger type on to it. like, he's not the type yeah. to, to veil a comment and chuck it at somebody or anything like that. I think he's just honest in his observations. Um, I like the speed that they had tonight in their lineup struds. And I said it earlier in the pod, it was in both directions. They were good on the attack. They were good mm -hmm. on the back check. I liked the way this team looked foot speed wise tonight. And I know it's because um, I know it's because Vegas iced the worst lineup in the history of their franchise tonight. So we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to look too deeply into that. They look like an expansion team. <laughs> uh, Zuby, let's check in on the poll and then let's, uh, let's wrap her up, buddy. What are, what are the people saying? It's, it's looking very close. Let me just, I got to click the thing right here. Let's see. Uh, so the question, as I phrased it, was can Holloway do enough in the remaining games to earn a start in game one of the playoffs? 48% uh, yes, 51% no. Ooh, so very, very close. Votes, so I see. Oh. Yeah. Some some very open-minded folks on the stream. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask one more. I don't. I'm uh, yeah. because this yeah. Taves to Kane asked me to ask you this last show, Stretty. I think it had or last show I did. I think it had something to do with the um, broadcast that night that you were on. He said, "Can Stretty give another example of someone besides Frankie Corrado or Dwight Schrute who is in a suit 24/7?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah. Reed Sherp and Frankie Corrado. <laughs> no, I said uh, on Overdrive the other day. He, he's he, I only see him ever in a suit. I said like, what is with you? Are you like Alexander Daigle or Dwight Schrute? You're always wearing <laughs> a suit. <laughs> and um, and he's like, sorry, I was going on over, or I'm going on wherever, right on the, on whatever, some panel or something. But he's always always in a suit. That guy, I've never not seen him in a suit. <laughs> he's an excellent up and coming young star at the network. He's doing he's yeah. doing some great work over there, and he just you know he's a professional. Struts. He tightens it up. Yeah. He dresses the part. He looks good, man. He does. He does. Yeah. No. He was. He just. He gave it right back to me. He's. I love it. Guy. Yeah. He's a good dude. All right, let's uh, wrap up the pod with our play of the day brought to you by Play Alberta. When the puck drops, the bets don't stop. Now with odds boosts on the games that you care about the most, like the Battle of Alberta that happened on the weekend, like tonight, I'm sure you cared about it. Got Your Back has an exclusive, uh, exclusive offer for you that'll score you a $50 free bet. Just deposit today at playalberta.ca. Promo code GYB50. So that is a promo code GYB50. Uh, any deposits over at Play Alberta, and uh, you'll get that $50 free bet. Struddy, what is our play of the day? This is going to bring tears to your eyes. The Dylan Holloway wraparound? That's exactly what I was going to say. Is that what you're going to say? That's exactly what I was going to say. Amazing speed. The speed. How many times have we heard the word speed out of your mouth tonight? And Dylan gets it and wraps around Aiden Hill on his roller skates, is unable to get back in time to shut the door. I've got a, uh, I got a solid runner up and okay. maybe we'll let Zuby break the tie. 
I think it was Obelisk saying, Struddy has no road game. I love that <laughs> comment. <laughs> Noticing you're in a hotel room, you're not at home. Your opinions yeah. were all over the map tonight. Yeah. Zuby, you can break the tie. What's the play of the day, bud? Can there be three? I loved Quaddy's comment about, about the Leafs. I thought that was a good ball busting yeah, oh, moment on the very Leafs, too. Good. Very honorable mention all there. Good. We had a lot. There was a lot of gold yeah. on the on the show. Was. Tonight. A lot of fun. And great stuff on the on the stream and a big number too. So uh yeah. Thanks everybody. Oh, love it. Yeah, fantastic number. Really appreciate everybody tuning in. Yeah. Struds, enjoy the rest of your event, my friend. Uh come home in one piece. Hey, eh? like yeah. save some for the weekend. And you're welcome, Oilers fans, for me bringing you down when you should be brought down. You're welcome. <laughs> Pegging everybody down a notch. Zuby, good job, buddy. Thanks, pal. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks to all of you for joining us on the live stream on YouTube and on Twitter. If you're listening to us in podcast form, we really appreciate your downloads. If you get a chance, go leave us a review over on iTunes. Smash the like button if you're watching on YouTube. I'm supposed to remember to ask you to do that. And a huge thanks, as always, to our title sponsor. We love him. Sherwood Buick GMC. Canucks dropped a point tonight. Oilers four back. Two games in hand. A game against Vancouver on the weekend. The division is not out of reach. It's going to be a fun chase here in the coming days. We'll do a post-game pod after the game on Friday night. Talk to you soon, folks.